Hello YouTube, I'm Zach, you're watching Zach DTV, the place for interesting news from around the net. In today's episode, we are going to take a look at China's new train bus thing. It's autonomous, so it's cool. Then we're going to take a look at Framework. It is a high-rise built completely out of wood. And then we're going to wrap up with a tree that does the same thing no matter where it's at in the world. It's pretty interesting. Stick around for it. And hey, if you want interesting news Monday through Friday, go ahead and click the subscribe button over here. That way you know when I upload something new. All right, let's get right into this. For my first story, I want to talk about this new type of transit that came from the Chinese rail company, CRRC. They're calling it the ART, the Autonomous Rapid Rail Transit. And this is basically a train that doesn't need tracks to run on. See, it drives on the road like a bus, but it only runs in designated pathways that are painted on the road using double dashed lines. So it's sort of like a train, except it doesn't need the tracks in the ground. It has separate carriages or cars that could be added and removed, and it can carry up to 100 passengers per car. And like the name states, it is fully autonomous, although at first they're gonna be rolling them out with a driver just for safety concerns to ease the public mind, that kind of stuff, but it will run autonomously and follow its predetermined course. It is a completely electric vehicle and it will run for 15 miles on a 10 minute charge. So it has some pretty good range as well. The idea for this is so cities without a huge budget to put in subways or tram lines can run this on the road in a designated lane. It's gonna save a lot of money for a lot of places. And they say that it does cost about the same as a bus, but just carries a lot more people. They do have a line that is being constructed right now and it's supposed to go into service in 2018 in Zuzu, China. I love that name, Zuzu. <laughs> but the first line should open in 2018. They already have a proof of concept running and I doubt that it'll be long before we see these in cities all over the world. Next, let's talk about a newly permitted building that's going up in Oregon. This is called Framework, and it's going up in the Pearl District in Portland. It's going to be either an 11 or 12 story high building. The estimates vary depending on where you get your source from. I saw 11, I saw 12, so I'll tell you both. We'll see what happens when they build it, I guess. And it's gonna be completely made out of wood with a little bit of metal and glass thrown in, but it will be a wooden, 12-story structure, which is something that's never been done anywhere in the world before. They're able to do this by using cross-laminated timbers, which is a technology where they take plywood and stack it layer by layer in opposing directions, put glue in between it, and press it together. Uh, some people call them trilams or manufactured beams. I've used quite a few of them in construction before. They are very sturdy. They're said to have the same strength as an I-beam of the same dimensions. So they should be able to hold up to this. That was part of what held up the actual permit of this building was they had to get together with Portland State University and Oregon State University to prove these things had shake resistance for earthquakes and could handle the rigors of wind loading and everything for a 12 story tall building. They passed all their tests and it seems like everybody's pretty excited for this, including their governor, Kate Brown. She said, projects like the framework building present a new opportunity for Oregon that we are perfectly suited to take on. Oregon's forests are a tried and true resource that may again be the key to economic stability for rural Oregon. So they hope that this project will show the rest of the world it can be done, it can be done cheaper than with a steel high rise, and they have the lumber to make it happen. And while we're speaking about lumber, let's talk about the Cook's Pine. This is a pine tree that's native to the New Caledonia archipelago in the Pacific Ocean. Now, of course, we are global and these things have ended up on nearly every continent. They're very popular in landscaping nowadays. Well, Matt Ritter from California Polytech State University was writing a description of the cook pine for a book on urban trees in California. He noticed that all the pines that he was looking at were all leaning south. He found this pretty odd, just thought maybe it was a local growth pattern until he called a buddy in Australia and said, hey, take a look at your cook pines. Which way are they leaning? Come to find out they're all leaning north. Matt says, we got wholly smoked that there's possibly a tree that's leaning towards the equator wherever it grows. So they went about a study. And they looked at 256 different cook pines scattered across five different continents. And after they compiled all this information, they found that the cook pine leans towards the equator at 8.55 degrees on average. The further from the equator it gets, the more drastic the lean. In fact, there's one in Australia that leans 40 degrees 
towards the equator. Now, scientists don't have a reason for this yet. It doesn't correct itself either, like a lot of plants will, where they start angling and they start growing back up. So the why is still a mystery. But these 200-foot tall trees all lean towards the equator. The world's a pretty amazing place, isn't it? And with that, I'm going to wrap it up. Thanks for stopping in. Remember, I do this Monday through Friday. That's five days a week. It is Wednesday now. Almost forgot what day it was. So I'll be back tomorrow. I'll see you guys here then. Be safe.